Welcome everybody to another episode of After the Tassel podcast. Today we have our special guest with us, Kayla Pilgrim. She graduated in 2019 from Westminster and majored in mathematics, and she minored in pre-engineering and chemistry. Um, She's had a pretty exciting uh, last three months. She'll probably tell us about that here in a little bit, but she uh, transferred to Missouri S&T and just graduated in May of 2022. So thank you, Kayla, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. (laughs) So, So tell us, what have you been up to after the tassel? So yeah, like you said, I went to s and I was there for about three years, and um, I just graduated in May, got my uh, bachelor's of science degree in chemical engineering. Um, Congratulations. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and while I was at s and I um, did, I worked as a research assistant um, in one of their labs, um, so that was really fun. And then, and I kind of did that through a summer um, in between classes. And then I also did a internship in uh, Minneapolis for eight months. So I took a a semester off of school and did that. Um, And then during my co-op, I actually got engaged to my boyfriend. Um, And then uh, in, so in May I graduated and then we, just bought a house and then I got married like two weeks ago and um, started my job about two weeks after I two or three weeks after I graduated I gave my time myself a little bit of time to have some fun before I started started uh, <laughs> the real world um, so I work as a process engineer at Raceline and Associates and I've been there for about five months now um, And so, yeah, that's pretty much it. (laughs) So I think it's safe to say that this year has been pretty good for you. Yeah, it's been very hectic. (laughs) Yeah, and honeymoon phase for your personal life as well as your professional life. Just start. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Hopefully everything's going really well in both aspects. (laughs) So so I'm interested. We'll get into your internship at um, Sherwin-Williams. I want to get into that a little bit later, but But first, what led you to choose Westminster College? Um, So one of the first reasons I even found out about Westminster was my two cousins, um, Katie and Lauren Pilgrim. Um, They went to Westminster a while ago, not too long ago, but a couple years before me. um, And I was looking at colleges and Lauren was like, oh, I'll take you to some of the colleges in the area. So she had kind of given me like the Columbia um, college tour and took me to William Woods in uh, Westminster. And um, that was kind of my first initial, like see I, the first time I saw campus. Um, and then I wanted to play softball. So I started talking to Joe Henderson, who was the coach at the time. And um, I really liked him and we got along. Um, I met some of the girls and, I also just came from a very small town, and I liked that better. Um, initially, I was like, oh, yeah, I'll go to Missouri s and because I want to do engineering. Um, so when I went to Westminster, I was like, I don't know how this is going to work, but they told me about this dual degree option, um, and then I liked just the small feel and closeness that I felt on campus, and so I just really loved it, and that's why <laughs> I ended up going there. Well, I know our softball team, our women's softball team, they're still very, very close. And I uh-huh. it was the way it was when you were at school here. Yeah, whenever I joined, there was like 16 of us probably, um, freshmen. Uh, it was kind of the first year that Joe really recruited people. Um, and all of us were like super, super close. We hung out in each other's dorms every night and it was really nice. It's good. It's good. good to have that kind of camaraderie and your cohort and everything together. Yeah. So kind of going into, um, you know, talking, you've talked a little about your internship before. Do you mind um, telling us a little more about what that experience was like for you? And even adding to um, what it was like uh, interning outside of state as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. So um, I knew I really wanted to do some sort of like internship or something um, before because I just wanted to have like 
a little bit of experience. So maybe I would have like a little bit more confidence going into an interview or a real job um, after graduation. Um, so I was on the hunt for one. I really wanted to do an internship initially, just like a small one over the summer. And I didn't want to have to take off school or anything because I wanted to graduate right away. Which um, is common. Yeah. Um, but I actually, when I found this, it was, um, you know, the summer and semester. So it's like six, seven months. Um, and I am so glad that I did that instead. Um, you really get like the full experience and you really get to learn. Um, another reason, or I ended up choosing out of state kind of on purpose. Um, I did apply to like places closer to um, like St. Louis area, but I really, I had grown up in the same town, went to the same high school. Um, my Westminster was only like an hour and a half from my hometown so I really wanted to kind of get out and do something on my own. So I, that's one of the reasons why I ended up moving to Minneapolis. And it was a crazy experience, <laughs> especially when you're, you're just eight hours away from everyone that you know. Um, I didn't have anyone with me. I luckily, there was a, um, in, someone who was interning who had started in January and was ending at the end of the summer where I had started at the beginning of the summer ending in December but we kind of had that little period together and we lived together and I met her and it was a great time um getting to like actually have someone with you but it is it was really crazy but I highly recommend it because it was awesome to like just be more independent um and set you up for the real (laughs) real world challenges (laughs) And and it can be scary too. I know that's something, especially after COVID, we found that, you know, so many students kind of drew back from doing something uh, out of state, but to you, so you said the independence, but what, what are some other like highlights to you, you feel for being able to um, do an internship outside of state? Um, I think also like the travel aspect, like um, whenever I was there, I did try to make sure I would go out and do stuff. Like I didn't just stay in my apartment all day. Um, so I would like, even if it was like an hour or two hour trip or get a hotel for the weekend and go stay somewhere two hours away. So it was kind of, I liked, I had, I'd done like small trips by myself, but, um, really like adventuring out on your own is kind of a unique experience and it's really fun. Um, but yeah. (laughs) Well, and too, you said, uh, before we got on the recording, you grew up in a, a smaller town, Washington. To me, that's a large town of, you know, because I've been through Washington. It's just gorgeous. I love it. Um, but had you ever been to a, a large metropolitan area like that before? Uh, no, like really just St. Louis. And so, yes. yeah, that was totally different. Um, I knew that I didn't really want to live in like a city type environment. Um, and that confirmed it for me. Um, I actually lived at two different places when I was up there. I lived like directly downtown, um, in a apartment building. And then I ended up moving out to, um, a smaller like duplex, um, that was like 20 minutes outside of town. So I kind of got both experiences. Um, but living downtown is very different and it was not my cup of tea, but it was good to like get to know people and like get out and stuff. So that was kind of, it's, it's good for if you want to test out if you like it or not. <laughs> yeah. yes. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> One of the, the most important parts of an internship is to see whether it's right for you or not. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and the location, definitely. Um, hats off to you for being brave and, and stepping out of your comfort zone and, you know, now being able to look back and say, I'm glad I did it, you know, because yeah. you may not get that opportunity again. Yeah, and like, for anyone who doesn't know me, I, I, I am more of an introvert, I would say. So it really was like out of my comfort zone. Like, that's not something I would normally do. My mom thought I was crazy. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's good to make yourself feel uncomfortable and try new things. So great. Well, I love that advice. Well, um, tell us more um, uh, about characteristics of a person needing for this type of work in chemical engineering. Tell us what kind of skills, aptitudes, interests, what can you tell our students? 
Um, I would say that, I mean, obviously, kind of the technical stuff that you learn um, in school, obviously. Besides that, um, it's really good that you just have like a drive to continue to learn. Um, You're always trying to learn something new, um, always trying to think of a different way to do something. Um, I think if you don't, you're really just like going through the motions and you're not um, challenging whatever you're working on. Um, And then another thing that's kind of, harder to teach is kind of the creative side. Um, You have to be willing to think of something else, Um, not just, okay, this is how it's done. This is how you do it. Um, You really need to like try and think of other ways to do do things and um, go outside the norm. (laughs) Um, And then also I would say being, really organized and like paying attention to details um that's a big thing that especially in my job now that I have to um really like pay attention to all the little details and make sure that you're catching everything what what led you to chemical engineering because there's all sorts of facets of engineering why chemical um it's kind of, I don't really have like a great <laughs> reasoning for it. Um, I did always like like my chemistry courses. Um, so I just thought that it would be more um, up my alley. The role I'm in now is kind of more of a mix between the chemical and mechanical side. Um, my dad was a mechanical, so I have um, been around kind of, he's told me about projects he's worked on and stuff. So I do have um I do like kind of both now I get to see kind of both sides of things I do think I like the chemical side more but I do like um they're very chemical and mechanical are very similar so um but yeah I I just kind of went out on a limb and (laughs) thought that I was like chemical (laughs) (laughs) that sounds like it played out yeah yeah (laughs) yeah Yeah. it's going well so far (laughs) and and so can I even add to that too um was there a certain course or maybe a certain professor that kind of that that you took that kind of helped maybe sway you in that direction um I think I kind of had it planned out like very early on um like probably in high school but I did have like courses um like all my chemistry courses at Westminster I really liked and so I felt like I was that's kind of why I ended up doing a chemistry minor while I was there um it wasn't like required or anything for my curriculum but um I really liked the classes I was taking and I thought it would be helpful whenever I went to SMT so can you no okay now just pre-warning you this was not on our list of questions <laughs> I'll throw you a curveball. James said he wasn't going to throw you a curveball, but I am going to, but I think you'll be able to answer the question. Can you walk us through the day in the life of a chemical engineer? Like, like, what do you do on a day-to-day basis or a weekly basis? Um, It's probably very different depending on the company you're working for and what kind of role you're in. Um, there are like a lot of very different roles you can be in as a chemical engineer. Um, And I've learned this a lot when I went through like job applications and things like that. Um, Me specifically, I do a lot with um, creating and updating our process flow diagrams. So that's basically a diagram that shows the whole process and what kind like the major pieces of equipment, what kind of um, flows are flowing through um, the chemical components in each step of the process. Um, That's really a big thing that I work on. And then also there's like kind of administrative type stuff where you're ordering equipment, requesting quotes, um, meetings, (laughs) uh, talking about different projects, what's new on the projects. Um, That's pretty much the gist of it, but. (laughs) So, so regarding, um, you know, your career and then like for the internship you did, what are tips you have to be successful in the, in that? So with engineering, what, what tips do you, you feel um, are needed to be successful? Um, I would say that you need to um, just like really put yourself out there. Um, really like I try very hard to like take my own time to understand what I'm learning. 
Um, I think that's super helpful whenever you're having conversations with other coworkers or your boss or anything, um, knowing, trying to understand what you're talking about. Um, it's really hard whenever you're in an internship or you're in, fresh at a new job and you don't really know what's going on um, right away. Um, so really like trying to do background research on like what you're learning and what you're working on. Um, and then, yeah, just, I think it's good to push yourself out of your comfort zone. And um, I don't know if I answered your question completely. <laughs> well, those, those were great, great answers because I, I feel with a lot of the students that we work with, there's such a fear that they have to know everything no. going into their job. Yeah, right? you're and, not going to know anything. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and go ahead. Sorry. Um, like, uh, me and my dad made this joke like whenever I first started I was like I don't know anything that's going on and this was at my job now but he said the same thing when I did my internship mm -hmm. um and he's like you're not gonna know till you're you're not gonna know even a little bit till you're like three months in and I'm like yep <laughs> and that's exactly why I was excited that I did a longer internship because I was like I remember the interns that were there at the at Sherwin-Williams were leaving when I felt like I was just starting. I felt like I was really starting to just learn something and they were already leaving. So you really need like a, a few months to really realize like what's going on. I mean, I'm still learning at my job now. I've only been here for five months or so, but it's, you're always learning still. And I probably will be learning for the next couple of years still. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, and, and I, I also really like the the point of just being being okay with being uncomfortable and putting yourself in those situations because I I really feel that's how you grow and that's exactly how you learn. yeah and, and especially in your field I mean there's I would imagine you're throwing in things every day that you're gonna have to be able to pick up quick and not easy situations but um, I would imagine that's that's something that's probably helped you really grow in your career too yeah like uh, a couple of days ago my lead came up to me and was like okay, you're going to be a lead on the next project um, that's coming up. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so obviously, like, I, I'm excited. But at the same time, I'm just very nervous. Like, I don't know what to expect. I don't know what I have to do. Um, but it's just a whole learning process. And people know that they're not going to expect that you know everything. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was just, I was even just scrolling through Instagram last night, and I don't know if you know who Adam Grant is, but he's kind of a organizational behavioral therapist, kind of like industrial organizational psychology, and he was interviewing Reese Witherspoon, the actress, uh -huh. and talking about how uh, she wanted to quit every day when she was in the role of June Carter in the, uh, the bi biopic of uh, whatever his name was, Johnny Cash. <laughs> and they were talking about, you know, her confidence level. And she's like, I wanted to quit every day. I called my agent every day. And she ended up winning an Oscar for her role. And she was like, you know, I can't, you know, the confidence that came from that. But he's like, that's interesting because you feel like you should be 100% confident going into a new role. But he's like, actually, the opposite is true. You need to challenge yourself with new things. And then the confidence comes afterwards. So the fact that, you know, your colleagues are trusting you, your supervisor to be a lead on this project. They know that Kayla has proved herself in these short five months, you know, can give you confidence. But once you get through this next project, I'm sure you're just going to be like, oh yeah, I, I slam that project. And, you know, <laughs> they're going to keep giving you more lead projects and, you know, assignments. So just let that confidence keep building. And, and yeah, you know, that's a great point. <laughs> Yeah, just keep challenging yourself and setting the bar a little bit higher each time, you know, and you'll do just fine. Yeah, that was one thing like with my internship. And that was the whole point that I wanted to do the internship was like, after I, you know, spent seven, eight months, like learning all this stuff. When I went to interviews, I was super confident in what I was talking about because I knew that I knew what I was talking about. <laughs> um, so it made just interviewing a lot more easier. And um, it's, 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 and I'm sure it's the same whenever it comes to like my role now after this first project, like you said, it's going to be easier down the road whenever you have that under your belt. Yeah. 
Yeah, you just need to, you'll, you're learning the industry jargon, you're learning the, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you have your career mentor, it sounds like, you know, on the job. So that's, that's all James and I would hope for all of our new graduates just to have experiences like that. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I want, I'm going to throw you another curveball. <laughs> it's how okay. Did you, how did you find this job? How, how did you find it through LinkedIn, through a net friend? My current one or my internship? Your current one. Well, either one. Both That's of you don't mind. mind. Oh, I'll, I'll do both. Okay. My internship was kind of out on a whim. Um, I did the career fairs. Um, I didn't have a lot of luck with that. Um, I just, I think I applied to it on LinkedIn. Um, I was just applying to internships like crazy, trying to find something. Um, and interviewed on like a Skype call and that was it. <laughs> um, and then my, it, my job now is kind of an interesting one. <laughs> um, I actually found it or I found the company through a friend of a friend. Um, I was at a bridal shower talking to my friend's friend and she was like, oh, you should apply here. And so I applied. I actually applied for a completely different position um, but after my interview, they were like, I think you would be way better in this position. And so they put me in this, which is what I wanted to be. I was kind of just applying to put my name in the system. <laughs> um, but I had originally applied for like a project coordinating position, which I probably would not have liked doing. <laughs> but <laughs> Oh, great. And I and I and I want to highlight that too. That's a great example for just with networking and for you know being able to find a job. It can be through a friend of a friend of a friend, but um, mm -hmm. just kind of knowing like how. I mean, you have options for like how how you find your job, and there's not always one clear direct way to do that. But just like always have an idea of like what you're wanting to do and talk to people and try, kind of put that out there. And then you never know who's going to be able to help you with that too. So that I, I really want to highlight that because I think that's a great example of how people are finding jobs and you know, what, it what definitely. Yeah. We need to bring you back on campus. Maybe you can talk to some of the uh, pre-engineering students and do a classroom. Presentation. I, I was going to say something about that because Peng, um, he actually organized a thing uh, I was probably in like April or something. Um, and I talked, there was only one student that came. <laughs> so I think if we have like, uh, maybe like better marketing for it, so people know about it, but yeah, I think like I had a whole presentation that I gave or that I had for it. So I would definitely like be willing to do that again in the future. Yeah. We're, we're really trying to invite our alums back to these podcasts and give classroom presentations. And we have mm -hmm. So we're really wanting to get our alums to hire our students and really build that collaboration because they know what good of a school Westminster is and you know what kind of an education you had here. So it's just a, it's just another way of giving back. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and students get excited to see, you know, what previous alum have done and kind of learn your path and how you got there too. So we, we love having alum on you uh, and doing the podcast and having them on campus just to um, share some wisdom on on how they got to their careers. Yeah, I think that's definitely helpful. Well, uh, as we wrap up the podcast here, is there anything else that you want to share with our students? Any advice, any words of wisdom? Um, I would say um, that I had like I was very down whenever I went through the job application process. Um, I applied to everything <laughs> when I was looking for stuff. Um, I started, so I graduated in May. I probably started in like September, um, the year before, and I went through lots of interviews, some good, some bad. <laughs> um, and it's really, it really is hard whenever you're not getting the responses that you're expecting. Um, so I just think like, keeping that in mind that everyone goes through that. Um, I, I went through that and I got a job two weeks or I had the job secured before I graduated. So it's just being prepared, starting early. Um, and I think just like knowing that everyone goes through the hard, the hard stuff, <laughs> everyone goes through the challenges of 
the job a job application process and if it's not challenging then you probably got lucky <laughs> um <laughs> so i i had a really hard time I, I there was one company that i went to and i um i went to two different sites and i talked to them in person um uh, at the career fair and i um talked to them on the phone two or three times and then they sent me an email saying sorry we didn't we didn't go with you and i'm like I just went through all this stuff. I drove hours to these job sites to see if it was a good fit and it didn't work like, and I just get an email. <laughs> so I know like that's like really frustrating and there has been other experiences like that. So, but it's really rewarding at the end when you get what you want. <laughs> so. Exactly. And I'm, we're pleased to hear that, you know, it's worked out so well, obviously, and they're putting you in as, as a lead for projects already. So it looks like it was a very mutual um, decision. Yeah. And the other thing is like, it does all, it happened all at once. Like I remember I, I had been applying for so long and then all of a sudden I had three offers within a month. And so it was like, I was having to decide, one of them was in Arkansas. So I was like, do I really want to move? <laughs> um, but just it's, you just got to be patient. Um, I know I really struggled with that. And I was like, what is wrong with me? Like, why is no one, no one reaching out to me? But um, I think, yeah, it just takes time and putting your name out there. And um, like, like I said, uh, I found this job through a friend of a friend. So it really will come to you in like the most unexpected way. <laughs> and it's hard to when it feels, it feels personal when, when anytime an employer does that. And I, I, I can speak for myself. I know I've had that Michelle, I'm, you know, we've in, and it's, it's the hardest part, I think with really kind of getting into your career and not taking it personally. But I, I think you said, and you definitely said it best, you know, it's a, it's a process. And, you know, I look at when one door closes, you know, multiple still open too. And, in your case, um, it did. And it's, it's exciting to see, you know, where, where have you gone? Like it's, um, to me, it's a great example. I know with, you know, the engineering um, side of it, we have um, students that are eager to get into that career. So it's, to me, it's really awesome to kind of see your pathway and how you got to this point too, and where you're going too. We're excited to see where you're going. Yeah. Well, thank you again, Kayla, for joining us today on our podcast. Um, we hope all of our students will listen and tune into you. Um, so just, we hope you hope to see you on campus soon. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I definitely am down to um, come on campus and talk and I, I love Westminster. So I love going back there and um, I went uh, for alumni weekend. I didn't get to see any of the professors. So I'm really looking forward to seeing some professors sometime soon. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know, uh, I know they're playing in a big shindig for next April. So we all have to of come. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, and also, congratulations with all your, your big things that mm -hmm. happened your, this year, your wedding, your graduation, new job. This is, uh, you, had, you had quite the year. So that's, um, it's very exciting to see. <laughs> yes, I have. It's been a stressful and exciting one. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you again. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. All right. Thank you. Thank you.